Hey animators, so today I'm gonna just quick run through our BH aim tools. This is only one way to use this tool, and there's lots of different ways. I'm just gonna demonstrate kind of a simple way to, to get some overlap. So I've got this run cycle going here. So I'm gonna read on the legs and the uh, hips, a little bit of animation on the chest there. I'm trying to keep this quite stylized and quite cartoony, so I'm not really going for naturalistic sort of feel here. Um, but I want to try and see if I can just kind of some action going in the shoulders and then maybe on the swords as well. I don't want to have him pumping his arms back and forth like I typically would in a, in a run, but just to give you an example of how you can use the tool, I'm going to just, just to run it first. I've, I've put the script in my Maya folder, my scripts folder, and I'm just going to hit or type in into the mel command down here source quotes uh, ph underscore aim small a and then tools big a, uh, t for tools and then dot mel and that's the tool run so you can add that to a, to a shelf button I've already set up here with an icon i can show you i can just edit that you know so source bhm tools dot mel uh semicolon at the end of that like any other mel command and that uh, and then the gui just i try to line, line it up so that you've got like the three functions are sort of divided into three panels here. So the first one you'll use is the create aim locator. You can actually create multiple ones at a time. So if I start off with the shoulder controls on this trigger and select both of them and just hit create aim locators, I'm going to make sure that locators are visible. They are. They might be quite small depending on the size of the rig. So I might go in here. Uh, you see, I've got, I'm going to create the, grab the left one first. And one thing that that's good to do when you're before you start moving these is to change your move tool mode to object rather than world just so that you're kind of moving them along one axis because generally you want to sort of move them to somewhere that makes sense because if you think about this being an it's, it's going to set up an aim constraint on this control so i want it kind of in this case i want it over here i might want it down there if i was doing more of a you know the arm swing but in this case i want to think more about the shoulder actually rotating up and down so i'm going to push it out there same thing with this one so you can kind of play around with this you know where you put them and how far you push them away from the source as well can have an effect on how big the uh, the overlap gets how big the arcs get and um, so I'm just going to put them both over there and then you can just grab them you can grab the locators it's a little bit different than typical constraint workflow you don't have to select the object they're constrained to or anything like that you just grab the locators and um attach locator to control and there's an option here on the GUI for keys only I've only got I think a couple of keys on these controllers as it is yeah I've only got two keys on them so I'm not going to use that I'm going to just turn that option off and it's going to bake them to all the available frames in the time range so I'm just going to attach locator to control so I'm going to go through and bake each one and then I'm going to just uh, press this button then like now they're they're animated they're following along with the rig but they're not actually controlling the rig yet. Now I just press this last the next button here, aim control at locator. And now they're actually controlling. You can see these extra little locators got got, got made there that um, are just showing you the uh, twist axis of the joint. They're just kind of like a visual guide. You don't actually do anything with those, but they just show you that if you if you want to rotate the, the control as well and that twist axis, that's the uh, axis that's going to work. So they're just purely visual thing. And same thing over here. And um, I've tested, tested this with a lot of different rigs and I haven't managed to make it flip or do anything nasty yet. So it seems to be working pretty reliably. Um, but if you do get something like that, you can always undo and then try a different axis, like move it out this direction or down that direction. But as I say, I haven't uh, had any issues with it. And I've tried it on quite a lot of rigs now at this point. So now that these controls are actually controlling this, you can do all sorts of things now. Like I can you know, polish the arcs, I can stick a motion trail on those. And I can see like where they're going, you know, and I could just start animating this by hand if I wanted, you know, just to kind of get nicer arcs over here to push this over a little bit. That's one way to approach it, just to kind of play around with, you know, moving these through space, getting nicer arcs. And that's really what I probably do myself most of the time. But sometimes if you want to get some quick um, overlapping action on a control, if you haven't got any animation on it at all, and you want to just add some overlapping animation, a really, really handy thing is just to go into the graph editor with that controller selected um, make sure it's looping just set all the curves to post infinity cycle pre infinity cycle this buttons over here to do the same thing and yeah, I've got view infinity on so I can kind of confirm that that's all working and then I'm gonna um, switch my snapping here to uh, time based so it's only gonna not gonna change value only gonna change time and I'm gonna turn my uh, time snapping off so that I can slide these forward 
just a little bit, maybe like a frame or half a frame even. Let's try just like half a frame, say around there. Let's see how that feels. Yeah, I quite liking that. I'll do the same for the other side. Again, I did use the icons this time, pre and post infinity cycling, and then just push these forward. Like, the nice thing with this, doing it this way, is I can kind of do it, you know, kind of by feel, not rather than plugging in values. Yeah, so that's not too bad. So I'm getting a little bit of drag now in the shoulders. And then to get that, you know, this obviously you would finesse this, but um, you know, you can add animation layers to these guys and, and you know, work on your poses, all sorts of stuff. But I'm, just keep this simple, I'm gonna just say that's working for me. So I'm gonna grab these two locators and now I'm gonna bake it back to the controls. So I wanna get rid of these locators and just put the animation back on the controllers. I just use this last button here. There's one option though to be aware of. Um, again, it has a similar option to the other, to the, when you're attaching the locators, it's keys only. So if I've just added a few keys to these controls and I want to like, um, just big just specifically just those keys back I can use that that's on by default but in this case because I've done snapped keys now so I don't really want to put that animation exactly on my um, controllers I don't want non-snapped animation I just want uh, you know regular keyframes so in that case I'm just going to turn this option off and select both the locators and just key control from it'll go through both do both of them um, because I had that option to, to just you know use all keys it's just going to key the range as so now I've got those, I've got the animation sort of baked in, but it's on, it's on whole frames rather than that. So I hope that gives people a general idea of how to use a tool, or at least one way to use it. And I look forward to seeing how other animators find new and creative ways to, to have fun with this tool. I think the fundamental thing about it is like that workflow that Richard Lico has demonstrated, the idea that you can turn an FK rotation into translation and then you can track that. It just opens up all sorts of different options. It makes it easier to track arcs, easier to see how things are moving through space. And as I say, in this demo, it's shown that you can you can animate overlap and stuff like that using existing animation on your rig already. So I hope that helps. I hope you'll find it useful. Cheers.